Stefano Tsitsipas won his maiden Nito ATP Finals trophy on Sunday after he beat Dominic Team 6-7, 6-2, 7-6 in London. The 21-year-old becomes the youngest ATP Finals champion since Leighton Hewitt in 2001 and also became the first Greek to win the season-ending competition. And amazingly, this was Tsitsipas's first appearance at the ATP Finals. It's a debut tournament victory for the young Greek that will surely live long in the memory. Welcome back to 10FM, I'm your host Caleb Mazoya, summarising the events of this year's NITO ATP Finals. The 8th highest ranked ATP players battling it out and it was debutant Stefanos Tsitsipas who came out on top. This is by far his biggest title of his career so far. Billed as the battle of the backhands between Team and Tsitsipas and it was Tsitsipas who came out on top although team has demonstrated his superiority in this department against Federer early in the competition. However, Tsitsipas' intelligence on the court is rivaling some of the best here, I say. Um, I think it makes and after the contest, both finalists showed off their class by sharing kind words about each other during the ceremony. Also congratulations uh, for all your amazing season this year. Uh, your team who is always supporting you, they seem doing a great job with you. You have a great chemistry, guys. You really deserve it. You're an amazing player, and I really, I really hope we're gonna have uh, some some great finals in the futures as well. I'm, I'm looking forward a lot to it, and uh, also, thank, uh, congrats to your team. Bravo. Earlier in the competition, Roger Federer and Novak Djokovic were forced to face off in a decider to see who would remain in the tournament. They were both beaten by the informed Dominic team in the pool stages. There was more at stake for, you know, for Djokovic as he was in another personal battle with Rafael Nadal to see who would finish the year as number one. Federer avenged his Wimbledon final defeat to Djokovic, putting on a more assured display than the Serbian at the Oats Arena. To be honest with you, I always thought Federer was going to win. In these early deciders, you know, before the final, the loser goes home. This is really, really likely and hard to bet against Federer winning these type of matches, regardless of who the opponent is. I believe that in three sets, in a decider like this, Fred Federer can get the job done. No, no, that really seemed out of sorts to be honest when you watch his display. He just didn't, didn't seem confident or assured on the court. And uh, I believe Federer just had the know how and the experience to down Novak, and it really showed. Although, to be fair to Djokovic, this was the first time that Federer had beaten him since 2015, which is you know remarkable in itself. I'm not sure how many times. Djokovic has faced off with Federer since that time. We all remember that recent Wimbledon final, which was so close to being a Federer victory. But Djokovic managed to pull out of the bag somehow in the tiebreaker. He has a very good record in tiebreaks against Federer as well. So maybe just luck wasn't on his side. There was something maybe niggling him, I'm not sure. But um, Federer's win over Djokovic meant that Nadal ended the year as number one for the fifth time. And he's now level with you know the other two, Federer and Djokovic in this area. And only Pete Sampras has finished first at the end of the year more times. To finish the year as number one is still a big deal for players, as expressed by a 12-time Roland Garros champion. This trophy is a is a work of the of the whole year, a great year in in all terms. Uh, have this trophy with me is a big personal satisfaction. No, I think we did a lot of things well during the whole year. Rafa didn't make it into the final four, but he did provide one of the best comebacks I've ever seen in tennis. From five went down in the side and set, the world number one came back to win 7-6 against Daniil Medvedev. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough to take him through. Nadal is my favorite tennis player. Those of you who know me, you know this. And um, for a long time, I just had one favorite. It was just Nadal. But recently, it started 2018, I believe, after I saw the US Open final between Serena Williams and Naomi Osaka. Naomi Osaka has become my second favorite uh, tennis player. She just, she just seems really nice. And for me, my third favorite would have to be Dominic Team. I really wanted him to win this final, to be honest, but um, didn't quite do enough. Although he did beat Federer and Djokovic earlier in the competition. 
and he's been playing I think this year he's been playing the best tennis of his life honestly he's just past or just too old to be considered sort of next gen but he's still up and coming I think he's gonna be the next guy to break through this so-called big three obviously since Andy Murray got injured no longer a big four but I think Dominic team could create a big make it a big four he has the he has the capability to do so although the youth are beginning to shine through the Nito ATP finals Alexander Zverev defeated Federer and Djokovic on his way to the title last year whereas this year 21 year old Tsitsipas was the victor the big three are all deep into their 30s and showing little signs of letting up but a long year of slams in which Nadal and Djokovic have shared two each in 2019 may start to take its toll around November time but I don't doubt that they gave it their best shot but the younger legs of Team Zverev and Tsitsipas were able to match them all the way although it's not clear whether Tsitsipas will challenge for a slam in 2020 as Zverev failed to kick on following his ATP finals win team came close to the thrown in Rafa at Roland Garros and Medvedev also succumbed to the might of Nadal at the US Open final but there is a very much an upward trend with this next gen and also Dominic team who I believe is just outside the next gen category 2019 was very dramatic with numerous records broken but let's hope 2020 uh, you know lives up to the hype I hope there's just as much drama just as many underarm serves and just as many upsets thank you all for listening in and tuning in i've tried to change the format of this 10fm episode to more of a radio bulletin sort of thing because it was you know initially written and i could go down the route of producing articles about tennis if that is something you guys are interested in just you know leave it in the comments i could make a wordpress or some sort of website where I publish the articles I write as some of you may know I'm studying sports journalism so I'm starting to get into the rhythm and hang of writing articles it's a bit different to football articles but same principles in effect anyway thank you all for listening be sure to like subscribe and uh, also follow me on twitter at Caleb Mazoya and also follow the 10fm twitter account at 10fm thanks for tuning in I'll see you in 2020